In this video, we're going to look at a basic introduction to integration. In this particular unit, we simply see it as the reverse of differentiation, or if you like, the antiderivative. So how can we find a function given its derivative? In this particular unit, we're going to focus on indefinite integrals. In later units, we will look at definite integrals and their applications. So let's start off with some notation. What we use is the sign, now the integral sign, and that's an elongated s. If we have now the integral of x to the power of n with respect to x, this gives us now x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. And we say now that n can't be equal to negative 1. Let's just take this and break it down. There's a lot to take on board here. All this is saying is when you integrate a power of x, you raise by a power, you divide by that new power, and you add what we call a constant of integration, which is c. We can't have now n to be negative 1 using this particular form, and in later units you'll see that that's logarithmic integration. But for now, all we have is this particular notation. So we say the integral of x to the power of n with respect to x is equal to x to the power of n plus 1. So we've raised by a power, we've divided by the new power and added a constant of integration. So why do we add this constant of integration? If I go ahead and draw now just three basic linear functions. So let's go ahead and we'll have this one and all I'll do is make them now parallel to one another. So if I just go ahead and move that and move another one, let's go ahead now and say that this is going to be, equal. Uh, this one will be y is equal to, let's go for 2x plus 5. This one right here, y is equal to 2x plus 3. And this one here, y is equal to 2x minus 2. So not massively accurate, but we would get some understanding now that these have the same gradient, they just have a different y-intercept. So if we consider now, if y is equal to 2x plus 5, we can say that dy by dx, which is the gradient function, is simply going to be 2. We saw this, we saw this now in the videos on differentiation. So if you haven't seen those, do go and check those. If we differentiate this line right here with respect to x, we say dy by dx, the gradient function, also gives us 2. If we look at this one right here, dy by dx, again, we multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1, and that's going to give us 2. So what happens when we integrate each of these? So what we could say then, just writing this out, the integral, so we're integrating with respect to x, the integral of 2 dx, well, this is going to give me now, we raise by a power, so it would be 2x to the power of 1 divided by 1. But hang on a moment. If I did this just here, I would get exactly the same, and it would end up being 2x, and this one would be 2x as well. So what we need to do is add c, and this forms what we call an indefinite integral. So we can say now that the integral of 2 with respect to x, and I'll just jot it here, the integral of 2 with respect to x will be equal to 2x plus c. We can find the value of c, and we'll look at that in later videos, by taking what we call boundary conditions. So for example, this point right here is going to be the point 0, 5, and we've got this point right here. We're going to write down that that is going to be 0, 3. And this one right here is going to be 0, comma, negative 2. So we could simply write now that y is equal to 2x plus c, as we've got now dy by dx. And we would simply substitute each of these boundary conditions in to find the value of c, which is our constant of integration. So when you're integrating pounds of x, you raise by a power, you divide by the new power, and then add a constant of integration. We won't necessarily be integrating with respect to x. It could be any variable. 
What we'll do in this video is look at some very basic examples and just go through the process. So let's go ahead and do that. We're asked to integrate the following expressions with respect to t. So the first one will be the integral now, and we can put this in brackets. Certainly with uh, more complicated expressions, it looks a little easier. We've got the integral of 3t with respect to t. So we write the integral of 3t dt. This is going to be now 3t, we raise by a power, we divide by the new power, and we add a constant of integration. So this is an expression for the integral of 3t with respect to t. If it was 3x, it would be 3x to the power of 2 divided by 2. Remember, that's just a 1. We're not interested in raising 3 to any power. The variable here that we're integrating with respect to is t. So let's look at another one. The more uh, integrals you do, the uh, tidier your integral sign will be. Um, it's perfectly fine for it to look messy. 4t to the power of 3. So what we're doing is looking for a function in t that gave us this as the derivative. That's essentially what we're doing. We're looking for the antiderivative or the integral. So if we see now an integral sign without limits, so for example now limits, these are limits, we would have now um, an indefinite integral. We'll, late, uh, we'll look later at uh, these, these limits, but let's just take those off. So this is the difference between a definite and an indefinite integral. We will have now limits on our integral. So this is going to give me now, I'm going to have 4t, need to raise by a power, and divide by the new power, and add a constant of integration. You'll be penalised if you don't add a constant of integration, especially in the uh, infancy, uh, infancy of your studies um, with integration, so do show that. The um, fours are clearly going to cancel, and that will leave us like so. Now, if you're unsure, well, let's just think now. If we did the derivative with respect to t, d, d, d dt of t to the fourth plus c, if we differentiate that, multiply down by the power, 4t, drop the power by 1, plus differentiating a constant, we've seen as given a 0 in the past, so this would just give us 4t to the power 3. So we can see now that this is a reverse process, but it's important now to add this constant of integration. As stated in later videos, we'll look at finding c such that we have an expression in t and then some numeric value instead of c. Okay, this one right here, what we've got then is now the integral of t to the negative 2. We couldn't have t to the negative 1. If we just consider now, let's just do t to the negative 1. t to the negative 1, if we were doing the integral of this by the techniques that we're using here, we would have t to the power of 0 divided by 0. Division by 0 is undefined, therefore we would use another approach, and that's logarithmic integration, which is covered further down the line. So let's go ahead and do this one. We want the integral. And with this one, I've not put brackets on it. You can do entirely up to you. So we would read this as the integral of t to the negative 2 with respect to t. So we raise by a power. A common misconception now is that that goes to 3. Remember, we're moving up. So if we're at negative 2, we want to move up by a power, which will be negative 1. Then we divide by the new power, which is negative 1 plus a constant of integration. Lots of different ways you could write this as negative t to the negative 1 plus c. Using the rules of indices, you might wish to write this now as negative 1 over t plus c, or in some questions you might see it as c minus 1 over t. So that's just different ways that it can be written. Okay, let's look at this one. Here we've got a fraction. So what we're going to do then is now say the following. We're going to have the integral of one half. What you'll see later on is if we have a constant, we can bring this now to the left-hand side of the integral sign. This just makes our work slightly easier. So for example, if I had now the integral, uh, let's say I've got the integral of t to the negative 2 plus 3t to the negative 3 minus 4, all over 7, 
here, I wouldn't now split these terms up and integrate them as the uh, values over seven. It's gonna get messy. I would simply now take the one seventh to the left of the integral sign and integrate these terms individually. We can integrate these terms individually in the same way that we differentiated them. So just because we got now these mon uh, monomials or single um, expressions in terms of t, it really doesn't matter. You can go ahead and do these term by term. So we're simply integrating different functions here. We would do t to the minus 2, 3t to the, uh, or t to negative 2, I should say, 3t to the negative 3 and so on and so forth. So this one now we can write like so. So what we'll have, no massive advantage of doing this. We're going to have now one half. And then we're going to have now, we raise by a power, which is t to the power of 4, and divide by the new power and add a constant of integration. So that will give us 1 eighth t to the power of 4 plus c. Again, if you're unsure, differentiate it. Um, I suppose that'll look a, a little nice if it had a gap between them. Let's see if we can just get it. There we go. So it doesn't look like so. There we go, that's what we'd have. And again, if you want to differentiate it, the derivative with respect to t of 1 eighth t to the fourth plus this constant of integration, multiply down by the power, which is going to give 1 over 2, drop the power by 1, which is going to give 3, plus the derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, the next one, what we've got is the integral of 1 with respect to t. You might see this written as the integral of dt. It's simply saying we're integrating 1 with respect to t. Well, all we're going to do is raise by a power, divide by the new power, and add a constant of integration. So we can simply say this is t plus c. If you differentiate t plus c, you're just going to end up having 1. So I've chucked that one in there just to give you um, an idea, um, because often it catches students out. It's, I think it's the easiest one to think of. What now differentiates to give 1 when we have the variable t? Uh, well, that, the answer is just t, because the derivative of t with respect to t is 1. Therefore, when we integrate, again, we're going to have t plus c. The reason being is what we've got here, um, if we just go ahead and draw that, if we look at the graph now, that plus c, and I am using linear functions, that c might be 0, which gives us a line through the origin. It might be now 1. It might be negative 2. Let's say that's negative 2. Probably need to move it down the touch. But that's what gives us our value of c. So that's a brief introduction to integrating powers of x, or in this case, I'm simply integrating powers of t. The take-home message is, when we're integrating powers of x or powers of t, we use this particular approach. You don't have to remember it. You can simply say, raise by a power, divide by the new power, add a constant of integration. We've seen the purpose of the constant of integration, but that's essentially it. We read this as the integral of x to the n with respect to x, and that just gives us this right here. So in later videos, we'll look at some harder examples and also finding the value of the constant of integration, c.